Hi, today we're going to talk about data frames. Data frames are a special type of uh, RDDs. Uh, RDDs are very generic and they lie at the base of, uh, of uh, Spark, but um, RDDs are pretty structureless. So in a regular RDD, you can just have any element in, in, uh, in each, in each uh, as you can have an RDD of any type of elements, and then you have somewhat more structure in the key value RDDs. But still, um, that there is a lot that remains to be done that we usually want. And why do we want to do this kind of restrictions? Because once we have that uh, type of restriction, it allows us to have much more optimization um, in the, in the uh, operation of the um, of Spark. So data frames are basically uh, two-dimensional data, and they're very similar if you know spreadsheets. So they have rows and columns, and in general, the columns have uh, names. And um, each column has a different type, but the whole column um, keeps the same type. So there's, so elements in the same column are all of the same type and each row contains a record, okay? So this is something that if you ever used um, Excel, you should be familiar with. And uh, this is similar, but not quite exactly the same as data frames in R or data frames in Pandas that were covered in an earlier course. So how do we construct an, uh, a data frame? So the one way is to use um, a to construct a data frame from an RDD of rows. Okay, so here is an example of that. We basically define um, a list of rows, so elements of type row, and um, then each one of the rows has um, component. Um, so fields like name is John and age is 19 and so on. And um, once we have this uh, RDD, we can make from it um, a data frame. So the way we do make it into a data frame is we call SQL context, create data frame from the RDD. So SQL context is very much like Spark context. It lives essentially underneath the Spark context, but it's a context in, that handles uh, data frames. Okay, um, so that's basically the SQL context. And you can see in the notebook that uh, you download exactly how it's created. And then you can print for the data frame its schema. Okay, so a data frame has a schema, very much like a database. And what the schema describes is the name and the type of each one of the columns. Okay, so a data frame is really nothing more than an RDD of rows, plus you have some high-level information that is the schema, okay? So if you perform collect on the RDD or the data frame, you basically get the same result, right? We have the RDD from which we constructed the data frame, and here is the data frame. When we collect both of them, you see that they're basically identical because um, once we collect the structure that is in the schema is basically uh, removed and mapped instead into these rows. It is often easier to define the schema explicitly. So instead of creating uh, a, lot of, a lot of rows and then making it into a data frame, we can just define one schema and then uh, give it a, a standard RDD. So here is an example of that. Uh, the schema is described here. Um, struct field, so struct type and struct field. They're all special uh, structures in Spark SQL. And, um, and we basically say what's the name of the field, what's the type of the field, and whether or not the field can be null. Okay. And then once we have that, we can just take a regular uh, RDD, which is just a collection of pairs, 
and we can read it in. So we create the data frame um, by, by giving it the RDD and the schema. Okay, now if we print out the schema for that one, we see um, that it's, that it's uh, what we expected. Okay, so this is a more structured way to create a data frame. Now, usually, um, you will not load the data frame in this way. Um, you would load it from something in disk, right? We're talking about big data, so these data frames are going to be tens or hundreds of gigabytes. And so um, the main way that you, that you create data frames is from, from a file. So uh, here are uh, three ways that you can use, Parquet, JSON, and CSV. I will only go in detail into the Parquet because the Parquet is really the um, most important way to uh, keep data frames unless you instantiate your own database. So what are Parquet files? Uh, Parquet is basically a data structure that is disk resident, and um, it is a structure that is used internally by some, um, by some database systems. Um, one of the main things that it allows that is better from having just a regular flat file is that you can have a query that you make on the uh, Spark, uh, on, the, on, the, on the file directly, and only the relevant part from the file gets retrieved, rather than getting all of the file and then filtering the parts that you don't know, that you don't want. So also, it's compatible with HDFS, with the Hadoop file system, which we will talk about um, uh, in a little bit. And Parquet, because it has columns that are all of the same type, it can use column-wise compression, where it can save a lot of space uh, if there is repeating values uh, in the column. So here we're loading um, a little Parquet file that is from the data directory. OK, so this is the name of the file, users.parquet. And once we load it, we ha can use the command df show, which basically gives us a little summary um, of the, of the uh, data frame, uh, similar to what you see in uh, pandas. OK. And here is a, a way to select a particular, uh, particular columns from this data frame. OK, so we select name and favorite color, and we see just that data frame, th those columns in data frame 2. Um, now, to save the file, we can just use the command df2, write, save, and then we give it the name. And that will save it in the Parquet format that includes both the content of the file and the schema. So when you load it back in, you can just read it. You don't need to specify its structure. So that's uh, another advantage. So let's have a look at a real-world data frame. So this is a data frame which is a small part of a bigger data frame um, that stores meteorological data from stations around the world and that we're going to use in the coming weeks in order to uh, do some analysis of meteorological data. So what do we have in such a data frame? Here we have um, the data frame being created, and we count how many rows there are in it. There's 12,373. And then we show one row. And so that's instructive because we can see what's stored in here. So this uh, row represents a year of measurements from a particular station. The station ID is uh, this number here. And um, the type of, of measurement is PRCP, which stands for perci precipitation, rain. And um, 
Uh, what we have here is some additional information about the station, elevation, latitude, longitude. And um, um, then the main part uh, is this, is this uh, vector. So that is a list of 365 numbers, which tell us what is the precipitation each day. Then this one is the year, and this is a label that identifies which part of the United States we're looking at. We'll talk about that later. So the important thing is that each one of these fields has a specific type, and um, it has also a specific length. And because it has a specific length, um, you can organize things in a columnar way and, um, and keep, them, keep them organized. And um, this last field here is undefs, how many of the entries are not defined. Right? Sometimes we look at this data, we'll see that there are some measurements that, um, that, are, that have a large number of undefined values. So this is uh, how uh, this data frame looks. Uh, here is a simple operation we can do on this uh, data frame. We can select particular uh, columns. So we select station year measurement, and we show five rows. Okay, so we see it's, they're all from the same station, different years, 1991, 1994, 95, 96, 97, and they're all precipitation. Then we can take the file that we have, um, that was actually loaded from a pickle file, and we can store it as a parquet file. Okay, so this is the commands for doing that, and that's a good way to store things, as we will see in the next video. So to summarize, data frames are an efficient way to store data tables or spreadsheets. All of the values in a column must have the same type, and a good way to store a data frame on disk is to use a parquet file. So next time, we're going to talk about how to do operations on data frames. See you then.